London, June 1952. A 37-year-old woman is walking back to her cheap hotel after an evening with friends. It's a drab night, but she's excited. She's going to join her lover in Europe. She crosses the hotel lobby. It's the last thing she ever does. Within a few minutes, she is dead. But this brutal stabbing was no ordinary murder. The dead girl was Christine Granville, Britain's finest female spy. For five years in the Second World War, she had regularly risked her life to arm the resistance. And to bring back information crucial to victory over Germany. Beautiful, charismatic, and cunningly intelligent, she is said to be the inspiration for the original Bond girl, Vespa Lind. What made her a great spy was her ability and inclination to take risks. But that also led to her death on a cheap hotel floor. The old town of Warsaw today gives a glimpse of what life was like in Poland in its heyday, the 1930s. Then it was still celebrating being the new capital of a country which had only finally achieved independence after the First World War. It was quickly becoming one of the most fashionable cities in Europe, with its pretty cobbled streets and tiered houses, where people came to enjoy themselves talk, eat, and have fun. Despite the turmoil of the Second World War and decades of domination by communist Russia, the city seems to have survived surprisingly well. Until you look closely and realize that actually it didn't. All these beautiful buildings are fakes. Even the statues are modern copies. Sixty years ago, this most attractive of old cities lay in rubble, obliterated by Nazi bombs, shells, and dynamite. The city was completely destroyed. Every house, church, and shop. Since the war, though, they have all been rebuilt so painstakingly and meticulously that the new old town fools most visitors. In 1980, it even became a World Heritage Site. It is a project Christine Granville would have approved of. All her life, she showed a talent for reinvention. Born Christina Skarbek in 1915, her mother was from a well-off family who had been settled in Poland for centuries. Christina Skarbek was an extraordinary alluring character. She, uh, as a girl, her mother found her quite uncontrollable. Her mother, by the way, was Jewish, a point that people never emphasize, but it is of considerable importance considering the risks to which she later put herself. It was her father, though, that the young girl took after and worshipped. An impoverished Polish aristocrat with a deep love for his country and its countryside, Count Jerzy Skarbek taught his daughter to ski, hike, and ride as well as any man. And his death, when Christine was just 15 years old, ignited in her a burning desire to live a life of which he would approve. Ten years later, she got her chance. On September the 1st, 1939, Hitler invaded Poland, a key part of his strategy to create a new German empire.
Despite heroic resistance, the Polish army proved no match for the German panzers. Over 60,000 Polish soldiers were killed. 400,000 were captured. The fate of Poland was sealed two weeks later when Soviet troops invaded from the east and the country was divided between the Russians and the Nazis. Poland effectively disappeared um, and the German administrators, the Germans made a huge effort to remove any kind of intellectual leadership, doctors, lawyers and so on, and the Germans transported the, the intellectual uh, leaders of Poland to concentration camps in order to turn it into a kind of vassal serf state that they could just exploit for agricultural purposes and, and raw materials. Poles who had money or influence like Christine became part of an exodus of professional refugees fleeing from all over Eastern Europe. They made their way to safety first to France and then to England. But it was a somber England that they discovered in the autumn of 1939. The country had already declared war on Germany and was gearing itself up for blackout, blitz and battle. Christine got used to the dark and gloomy London streets, especially around the heart of the British government in Whitehall. There she was introduced to officials from British intelligence keen to meet Poles who might be persuaded to spy for their country. Christine needed little persuasion. They thought she was ideal spy material. As a youngster, she'd been passionate about riding, skiing, and so on, which in many ways was an ideal qualifications to be an agent. She was very courageous. Um, she, was, she was a bit of a gambler as well. She typifies many of the features that recruiters would be looking for. Um, a passionate patriot, someone with very good language skills, um, an ability to work on your own, um, an ability to uh, be pretty fit and pretty, uh, to survive under potentially um, some very grim conditions. The recruitment of agents in war-torn Britain in late 1939 was uncoordinated and haphazard. Sorry, are you going in here too? Yes. Spying wasn't top of the agenda, since all eyes were focused directly across the channel and a possible German invasion. But anybody who wanted to try and sabotage the Nazis and stood the smallest chance of succeeding was encouraged either officially or through the back door. Christine convinced one official that she knew what she was doing and was taken on and given an alias as a journalist. Nobody really expected her to succeed. Christine, though, had other ideas. she decided to smuggle into Poland propaganda leaflets which could lift the spirits of the resistance. All the obvious ways into Poland were blocked, apart from the Tatra Mountains, which were so treacherous to cross, the Germans didn't even bother to patrol them. Nobody could get into Poland that way. Nobody, that is, apart from Christine. She was purely self-motivated. She put, set all this up by herself with her own affair. No Secret Service had heard of her. And when the Polish Secret Service did hear of her, they said, must be a plot. Couldn't possibly do that without German collaboration. <laughs> Which was quite wrong. They had not been sportsmen themselves. And that was the key. Christine was a sportswoman. She had skied mountains so many times in her youth that they were a second home. Soon, she was in Poland, and that's where her career as a spy really began. To go back to Poland in 1940 it was very courageous. Um, within the, 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 the Warsaw community, she was a known person. Uh, and also, um, the Germans were quite ruthless about it, removing any kind of resistance. It was very courageous of her to go back because um, 
you didn't know who'd survived, what kind of contacts were safe, um, whether you'd be recognized by people who were uh, hostile. Um, so it was a real jump into the dark, and to do that was in itself a very brave act. In the city, Christine's life was at risk every moment of the five weeks she was there. The Germans were everywhere. The city was crawling with the Gestapo. And it wasn't just the enemy that she needed to look out for. The Poland she had known had vanished, and it was now a place of double agents and spies. Even those who had been friends could turn out to be untrustworthy. Sitting in a cafe in Warsaw one day in February 1940, just before she was due to make the perilous journey back to Hungary, Christine was recognized by an old acquaintance, surprised to see her in the city. Christine coolly replied, the woman was mistaken. She has never seen her before. The woman left. Christine's cover wasn't blown. If it had been, she would have been tortured and then shot. But such risks were part of the job. Soon Christine wasn't simply bringing information to the Polish resistance. She also carried contacts and information back to Britain, particularly about the new German weapons that were being made by Poles, forced to work in German ammunition factories. And then she was trusted with the most important piece of information. She was given a precious microfilm shot by Poles of the massive buildup of German tanks and troops on the Russian border. It was the first evidence that Germany was preparing to attack Russia in what became known as Operation Barbarossa, the most vicious and crucial conflict of the entire war. 